Good morning, Abshani. Okay, everybody's excited. You can hear me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ruth. Now you've got a remarkable story, and the courage that you had to have through your life, in order to be able to sit here, I think is an inspiration to many people. You're a principal now, and you are leading a team of people that inspire young children, and you um, have to keep them all together. I don't know how that's done. I think it's a few selected people who are called and equipped to do that, and you're a remarkable woman doing that. But every person sitting in a chair, and we are at this morning, has got a, a background, because sometimes we only see the final product, and nobody knows the journey it took there. So we're going to have a few minutes of talking about that. And I want you maybe just to tell me the, the situation where you grew up. Where, where does Ruth come from? Where did it all start for you, family life? Um, just give us a picture so that we can know where the journey started for you. Good morning. San Bonan Dumelang Abshen. My name is Ruth. I'm coming from Johannesburg in Soweto. I was born in Soweto. Then I got married in Mamilodi. And I'm the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Sono in Midlands. We were five. And unfortunately, my mother lost four of her kids. And I'm the only soul that is uh, surviving. So here I am. And as you can hear, my name is Ruth from the Bible. Mm. I'm the strong woman. <laughs> of <course it> is. <laughs> I'm the very, very strong woman. So uh, what I like is that my mother, she's a pensioner. She was a teacher, a very strict woman. And my father was also working in Johannesburg. So I grew up in a very religious family, a very strict family. But I thank God that, you know, God gave me the perfect parents. Because without, without them, I don't believe I would be here today. So normally I said, thank you, God, for giving me the best parents. But Ruth, in that, uh, a perfect family is a wonderful base to grow up in and uh, function. But, um, but you grew up in a very strong apartheid time as a, as a young girl. Um, and I think anybody looking from outside, perhaps South Africa, uh, and where you are now today will ask the question, but coming from that time, how did it affect you? What, what were the things that... I think your early stages of courage had to take you through. So how was that time for you as a young girl? Yes, I started my school at uh, Rishila, then I went to Mawila High School. Then when I went to Lamula Jubilee, it was that uh, time of the apartheid era, mm. 1976, where we were taught in Africans. I'm sure some of you know that. Then we, there were some challenges because, you know, Africans, it was a little bit difficult for us. Hence, I was one of those uh, learners who was affected. Mm. Then my parents said, no, because as you can see, always you don't go to school, the riots is going to affect you. Let us take you to a better school. Then I went to Malamulele in Limpombo. Then is where I continued with my study. And then when I was at... Uh, it was somewhere around 1977. Then we met other, other friends who were coming from different backgrounds. We were sharing about the apartheid, what was happening. But we said, no, we are here to come and learn. Let's just forget about everything. But uh, we'll see what is going to happen after that. But how that many people had that mindset? Because in any difficult situation, people sometimes feel either a victim, you know, this is something that is keeping me back, and others say, no, I'll use it as an opportunity to grow through it. How did you manage to, to deal with that, where other people said, no, no, you, you know, this is a bad situation. It's, it's keeping and preventing you from, from being educated, being growing. But obviously, what, what did you... How did you help yourself through that time to stay motivated? You know, if, you, if you've got courage, courage will make you to be a better person. 
Then I sit down and said, you know what I want? I want to be a better person so that I can have a better family because at the end of the day, I'm not doing that for my mom, but I'm doing that for myself. And that is going to be my future. So I said, it means that education has to come first. That is how I survived. Yes. Now, Ruth, you grew up in a Christian family, you said. Um, but where did your journey with God begin? Was it an early thing already? Or when did you really come to the realization Jesus is your Lord and Savior? It started when I was shot. In 1997, I was the head of department, and I was teaching grade two. So... Yeah, you need Jesus if you want to teach those kids anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, every Friday, there were twins in my school, so I normally bought some food for them. It was myself and my friend, Macy. So, in that time, it was somewhere in November, 1997, I had some differences with my husband. So, on that day, something terrible happened to me. My husband was very angry. He came to school with a gun, and he said to me, but you know, I had courage, and I was feeling something. Then I said, this one, he thinks that I, does not, I, I, I do not know what he's going to do. Then I told him, I said to him, it seems as if you want to kill me. He said, ah, no, me, no. Then I said, let me tell you something, because I hate courage. If you think you're going to kill me, if it is my day, yes, I will die. But if it is not my day, I won't die. Then he said to me, oh, Ruth, you look smart. He was busy bribing me. Then I said, oh, yes, I know that. <laughs> uh, then the gun was under the seat. Some of my friends said, Ruth, just pretend as if we are going to a workshop. I said, no, I'm not going to, pre to pretend. If you want to do something, my God, because I had that courage that my God will fight for me. And then when we were busy talking, he pulled out the gun. It was taught after school. He showed me seven times. Then I fell down. When I fell down, I was un unconscious. Then you know when I was lying down there, there was a, a circle. Then there were five women. I think I was connecting with God, I don't know. Those five ladies, I don't know them. But the other one, it was my late mother-in-law. The other one, it was my late grandmother. Those three ladies, I don't know them. And then they were talking. Then I said to them, can you put me inside your circle? You know, this man wants to kill me. They said, no, Ruth, we're still having a meeting. We'll come back to you. <laughs> hey. You can't I said, die yet. You know? I said, oh, this lady is so now. Oh, oh. Then immediately that circle, you know, it closed. Then it went like this. It was closed. Then I said, mm. then when I wake up, then the first thing I hold here, because there was blood here, my, my learners were there, ma'am, mashaba, ma'am. Then there were those, those twins. Ma'am, please, if you die, who's going to buy me food? <laughs> That courage, you know, I said, uh uh, 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 never. I'm not going to die. Seven bullets. And he was lying here next to me. Then I said to the school kids, let's pick him up. They said, uh uh, -uh ma'am, we are taking you, leave this man. We are taking you to the hospital. Fortunately, the hospital it was nearer to the school. You know, I've, ran, I've never ran like that in my life was running to the hospital with the kid that was holding So you me. were running with seven bullet wounds in your Seven bullets, running. Immediately when I reached the gate of the hospital, my, locked, my leg just locked, then I fell down. When I fell down, there was a boy, Pete Malulek, said, ma'am, you won't die. We need food, ne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> food, ma'am, you are not dying. He went to the hospital and came with the stretch. I'm talking about the primary kids. 
they carry me, put me on the stretcher, push in the stretcher, I said, Pete, don't push too much. Oh, I'm going to fall. They said, no, ma'am, don't worry, don't worry, ma'am. Then I went inside the hospital. You know, on that day, normally, because I was traveling from Joe, we were, we were in the separation. So I'm a lady who likes handbag. On that day in the evening, a day before, I took out my medical aid and it, then I left it at home. Then at Mami Lodi Day Hospital, they said, mm, unfortunately, she does not have a medical uh, card. She must go to Kalafo. Fortunately, my friend Joyce Ndunduma heard that, oh, the, prince, uh, the HOD, my friend Ruth, was shot. Everybody was there. Hey, we want to see what's happening. Then I was lying. I was talking. Then I said, mm, you are brave. I said, I think that, that was courage. I said, I'm not dying. Hey, those two kids, hey, 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 food. <laughs> yeah. Then I was busy talking. They said, okay, the ambulance will take you to Galafum. Inside the ambulance, I still remember. Joyce said to the driver, no, take Ruth to Valkes. I'll pledge with my medical aid. Then I said to Joyce, Joyce, hold my hand. I had that carry that when she hold my hands, I'm going to survive. When she hold my hand, I could feel the warmth. But when she leave me, there was as if no that breeze of coldness. I said, hey, Joyce, hold my hand. Eh? No, hold. And I'm thinking about my two kids, my mom. Oh. Then the ambulance went to Verges. Fortunately, my father and my mom were driving from Soweto to Verges. My mother is a praying woman. She was busy praying. Then she said, Nana, baby, you are not going to die. I said, I was just nodding my head because like now I was, so, I was tired now. I just said, then she, she prayed for me. Then they said, oh, seven bullets. Then they took me to the theater. I stayed uh, in the ICU for two weeks. Then on the, I think uh, the third week, I went to the, to the ward. Then I started to talk, but my speech, it was a little bit because I had a bullet. The bullet was here, they didn't remove it in November. I have to stay with that bullet for November, December, January, and February. It was here. The other one, it was here. Two bullets. Then, when I was at the hospital, you won't believe it, I said, where's my man? My mom said, hey, leave your man, man. <laughs> hey, your life is. I said, where is he? They said, no, he's at, a, at another hospital. I said, okay, but he's, he's okay. My mom just keep quiet. By the time he had died, he shot himself and he died. He was buried. Then I said, okay, from there at the hospital, I was uh, discharged. My doctor, it was Dr. Haramse. Then I couldn't walk properly, and my left hand, I have to go to the physio. Mm. So the doctor said, uh, Ruth must also go for counseling. My mom said, uh, God will counsel her. I said, she's, she's I said Mama, no, I must go for counseling. Eh, eh, no, Ruth, God is going to cancel you, my baby. By the time I couldn't eat from November until for three months I didn't eat because they have to bring back my, cho my jaws because they've shifted. So I was just drinking liquids and my mother didn't eat because I was not eating. Every day she was praying, praying, praying. Friends were coming to see me. Then I was just, you know, sometimes I would just ride. Then my mom said, Ruth, you need to stand up. You won't see there in the bed forever. I'm not your girl. I'm not your maid. You must start to practice to walk. I said, ah, I'm feeling so. I said, ah, 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 ah. No, you know, she gave me that card. I said, yeah. But she's telling me something. 
I still remember it was on the 25th of December, the very same year. Crickets, you know, they were doing boom, boom. I said, these crickets, they make me too. My mother said, what must I do? It's Christmas time, so people mustn't celebrate because you are injured. Ah, uh, uh, no, no. I said, hey, my mom is very strict, Oy, honestly. Hey, this woman, she can't see that I'm feeling pain. She said, people must celebrate, it's Christmas time, so I must go and say, and tell them, no, don't blow the crickets because Ruth is sick. No, no, you must stand up, my girl. I'm the, and I'm leaving you, I'm going to my neighbor. I said, hey, alone in the house, and my dad I said, the curry said, I, yeah, no, I have to stand up. Dr. Haram said, the, it seems as if the bullet is moving. Dr. Haram said to me, let it move. I said, hey, the doctor is telling me this. My mom is saying that, hey, no, 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 I have to stand, I must do something. So when they say, bite the, bite the bullet, you knew what it meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, hey, as if the bullet is moving, Dr. Haram said, there's nothing that I can do, Nana. I said, oh, mm, okay. For three months then, I lost weight. You know, I was like, you know, Miss South Africa now. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, January, February, on the 6th, I went, to the, I went back to the hospital to remove the bullets. My mom was praying. Then my mom said to me, Ruth, before you go to the theatre, what can you tell me? I said, hmm, Mama. I think God is in control. I've got courage now. God will do everything. As long God has given me second chance, he had a purpose with my life. Yeah. And those two kids, every day, you know, I was receiving letters, Ma'am Mashaba, keep well, ma'am, we miss you. I was re reading a, a, a heap of letters. I said, oh, okay. Then the doctor said, uh, Ruth, you'll stay, we'll give you a, let's say, for a year. I said, mm -mm. after six months, I'm going to work. I said, are you sure? I said, yeah. I still remember the second term July, after the operation, the, when, the operation went well. Mm. I said, wow, oh my God, yo, yo, yo. Yeah, I've got a task that I have to do. Then I went to the school, second term. Then I dressed, and then the principal said, Ha, ah, you are back. I said, yes. Can I go to my class? Ruth, you won't make it. I said, I am in here. Are you the God? I'm the one. Let me go to my class. The, the minute I, everybody was coming to me, and running to me, touching me. Then others they wanted to see the bullets where, the, where she was shot. <laughs> you know, people, how they, because I had one here, two here, the other one here, and this one, the other one here, the other one, and the other one. So, you know, I was just telling myself, hmm, I'm, you know, it gave me courage said, telling myself that, hmm, talk of the town, <laughs> the lady, that lady, <laughs> ah, talk of, you know, Mgobos, we call it in our uh, language, oh, talk. whenever I go to the meetings, I say, I said, you know, seven is my lucky number. <laughs> seven. I said, oh, seven is my lucky number. <laughs> seven bullets, and here I am. And then, you know, sometimes men will stare at me and say, hey, why are you looking at me? Come and ask me, I'll tell you. Yes, I was shot seven times. And, and you know what? And sometimes they will say, serious. I said, serious, how? <laughs> why? I said, and then, you can walk so properly. I said, yes. Mm. And I also learned to forgive my husband. I said, you know, let him... Now, Ruth, before we go to the forgiveness, because that's a big thing, but you told me that the meaning of courage has got something, because every, your whole story yeah. is about courage. To go into the operation room, to go back to school, mm. to face the people asking, mm. even forgiving your husband. But just before you tell us that, what is the meaning of courage for you and what has it become? Just shortly tell us what uses courage. For me, the word courage, it means the ability to face 
something which is very big, to be brave and face some challenges that can, you know, make you to be fear of something. But through God's grace, mm. you can conquer it. If you have good courage, so many things can happen. But if you doubt yourself and say, you know, I don't have courage, honestly, things will just take place. But in my, in my situation, the way I want to unpack the word courage, it means that the braveness and the strength that you, give, that you find from God, that is courage. Mm. The way that you understand yourself, the way that you believe that the God Almighty, everything is possible through God, mm. that is the courage. Mm. And that courage, you need it in order to forgive your husband. Yes. So how did you manage to do that? Because I think many of us have people that we forgive very quickly, mm. and others have impacted in such a way it's not that easy. How did you manage to forgive him? You know, I still remember when I was at the hospital, I think he was, I dreamt about him. He was wearing the very same clothes. Then coming to me, he said to me, Ruth, may you kindly forgive me. I can't go there. I said, where? He said, I can't go there. I said, where? He said, please forgive me. Then I said to him, I forgive you. His name is Father. Father, I forgive you. He said, thank you, Ruth. Then I will be able to go there. I didn't know where he was going. And I didn't know, I didn't want to know where he was going. As long as I was, you know, in this earth. So, uh, you know, to forgive is a, is a big task. Because during that time when I was at the hospital, the family, you know, when a woman, when a man dies, always the man killed the man. The family of my husband turned their back to from me. They took everything in the house. Then when I went back to the house, the house was empty. He said, mm, mm, mm. people said, you must go to the police. And I said, those are material things. God gave me second chance. I'll see what I can do. I had the courage. I said, hey, people don't me. Watch this step. Ruth is back now. Ruth is back. Then, you know, I said to myself, what I'm going to do, I'm going to forgive my sister-in-law, the family, because by the time, you know, there was no good communication in between the family. But what I like about my mom, during the funeral, my mom went to the funeral with, with my kids, with my two children. I've got two two children, a boy and a girl. And then she bought everything for the family. My dad was very angry and said, hey, 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 why do you take money to that family, man? When? Huh? They nearly killed my angel. So, you know, to forgive, it makes you to be healed. And it makes you to heal quickly. That is why I don't want to bear grudge because the more you bear grudge, you have wrinkles and you, you grow old, you know. Just keep on saying, yes, I forgive you. And you must mean it from deep down from, from your heart. You know, if you can see me at school, I even dance with my learners. I do everything. Because, you know, I said, oh, Mudimuaka, oh, my God. Oh, Tikoam, oh, my God. Oh, ah, this girl, hi, 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 hi. Yo, this girl, I, I'm coming very far. Seeing those goggles there, those five goggles. You know, it makes me to be a very strong woman. Then I said to myself, from here, what do I do? I still remember one day the doctor phoned me at Vera and said, Ruth, come, there's a lady from Kwamsanga. She was shot with only one bullet. She was crying, hey, you know me. Ah, it's painful. I said, hey, Buga Wena, one bullet. Hi, <laughs> Wena. Hey, one bullet. Me, seven bullets. Ah, Wena. Mm -mm. Yeah, wake the, up, wake up. You're the lucky one. Stand up and pull up yourself. One bullet, one. 
Uh, Ruth with seven bullets. Look at me, look at me. I said, look at me. You know, we can start something. Huh? We can start something. Then she said, hey, we are sis, Mina. Hey, my sister, I know. Hi, hi. hi. I said, uh, you must have courage, sissy. You must, you must have faith. Faith goes together with courage. If you can have faith, then you can stand up. Even now, you know, whenever it ha- somebody has got a problem, I said, stand up and do something. I encourage people. Then they said, hmm? yeah, Marane, yeah, yeah, Ruth, ne? yeah. Hey, you, you can write a book. I said, mm, watch me, even if when I go to pension, I'll write a book about myself. So the book would be titled Seven Bullets, The Lady with the Seven Bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, God makes impossible to be possible. Yes. Now, Ruth, I think many people would be satisfied with the testimony of I've been shot seven times. I had courage to go through life, apartheid, to see the change, grow in a career, um, survive that attack, and you're still alive. And people will go, that's a fantastic one. But now you're a community woman, you're a principal of a school, you're educating so many kids around you. Um, that is the greatest testimony. And I think the joy and the worship that you have in your heart to dance with the children, to, where everybody knows there's a second chance because you had courage to do that. Um, I want to... Maybe just in a in last sentence or two from you, the importance for any business person, but a woman, to face one or two challenges. What if someone comes to you, doesn't have a bullet in them, but perhaps feel like they've been wounded through whatever experience? How do you motivate someone in that situation? You know... Um I normally put God first. Even when I have to encourage somebody, I say, God, instill those words of encouragement so that when I encourage someone, that person can understand me, can hear me in totality. So as women, and because this is our month, And this is my month of birthday. I say to the woman, let's stand up and have that courage. No matter how the situation it is, stand up and say, God, you know me. Give me the strength. Make me to be brave. Make me to face the courage because through you, you can conquer so many things. So many, you know, just tell yourself because, you know, you find that Sometimes we as women, I don't know, maybe with men we don't, we don't do that. We as women, we like to, what do you call, backstep one another. Or to love somebody. Oh, that one, Ashen, the husband step, the husband is giving her a tough time. But as women, in Sesutu Bar Mosadu Tsarachi Baga, ahey. So you must stand up and say, Basadi, women, let's support one another. Like now, yesterday, I was at a certain school, SCD Basadi, I said to the other women, uh, the other principal, they've lost their husband. I said, I want to open a widow's forum. Widow's forum, where we talk as women. We unpack issues. And the first thing as women, love yourself, embrace yourself. Tell yourself, Oh, I'm the best. You know, God created us being special as women. The flowers of God are the women. Sure. Ruth, it's been inspirational to hear your story. And I want to appreciate your time. And I want to throw the challenge of our life back to you that we take a few minutes around the table. Now, if you listen to the story, there's a couple of things from your story, Ruth, that presented itself to you that you grabbed like the kids, the people that you have influenced that gave you courage. The friend that held your hand in the ambulance Mm. where you felt warmth. 
Your mother that didn't tell you what you wanted to hear, but the truth. Um, so many things that gave you courage. And I think we can quickly discuss what things in our lives gives us courage. Where do we instill courage in others where you might feel that you've got the one bullet and someone else with seven bullets can actually give you courage? So let's take just a few minutes where you perhaps say, what are the greatest things in your life story if you would have sit here to share that gives you courage? Or, and then afterwards, maybe whenever you want, you write down where you got some courage or where you need to give some courage. Because I think the remarkable story that Ruth shared with us is a testimony that we all want to be telling continually in our life and how God is with us and giving us faith in Him, having Him first, um, and drawing courage from who God is. So let's take a few minutes. Maybe just appreciate Ruth first with a round of applause. Thank you so much, Ruth. Appreciate it so much. Can I say something else? Can I say something? Just the last word from Ruth before we discuss it in our groups. There's a verse that I like from the Bible. Psalm 23. That gives me courage. If you can go through it, it will give you courage. He said, even when I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Psalm 23 for the woman. Let it encourage you. Let it take you where you want to go. Psalm 23. And to the ladies, let us be like Ruth, Esther, the ladies in the Bible for this month. And said, if you can see, Ruth, her husband died and she wanted to stay with her mother-in-law. She didn't say, because my husband had gone, let me go home. So let us be like the ladies, the powerful ladies in the Bible. And I will say, I thank you so much and stay blessed. And I love you all. And thank you for giving me this time to share my story with you. Thank you.